Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that talks about a domain specific language for editing and creating videos. Now I've talked on this channel in the past about wanting to automate my video editing and not spending so much time fiddling around in a GUI. And this paper really demonstrates how if you can model this domain just right, you can capture the solution in a really neat and elegant domain specific language. The language the authors talk about here is embedded within the racket runtime. And it's in keeping with the overall racket philosophy to problem solving, which is to come up with a language in which expressing your domain and the solutions to problems in your domain becomes natural and easy. The motivation for this whole thing will be quite relatable to anyone who edits videos on a regular basis, which is that editing videos in a GUI can be a pretty monotonous and repetitive job. They give the example of this person who is tasked with creating all the talks for an academic conference. And again, that's very repetitive. You have the same kinds of basic clips, which you have to put together and render into the same kinds of final videos. And the approach taken in this paper is that instead of fiddling in a typical GUI video editor like DaVinci or Premiere Pro, you specify your edit in a script. The language in this paper is called video. So you write a video script. And when you run that script, it produces your final video. And video editing is a particularly suitable domain for scripting because we already break it up into two steps. Step one is where we specify our edit. Now, usually this is in a GUI, but that's where we describe all our clips and our effects and our transitions and how videos are overlaid on top of each other and so on. And then step two is rendering it. So when we've done all that specification, we finally render that entire specification into an output video. And a language like video aims to capture that declarative step one. So let's jump right away into a concrete example of what this language looks like. Let's stay with the example of wanting to produce a video for a conference talk. And this is a simple script for what the solution might look like. This first line, hash lang video, is typical racket speak for the following script is written in the language video. And as you read the rest of the script, the striking thing is that it's pretty self-explanatory. For example, we start with an image of a splash page, which might be the conference logo. We then transition using a fade into a multi-track video. And this multi-track video here consists of two videos playing in parallel on top of each other. The slides that the speaker is talking about, along with a video of the speaker. And these numbers over here specify the dimensions of these two videos. So the slides occupy most of the screen and the speaker is in a smaller rectangle off to the side. And down on the bottom, we have a watermark for the logo of this conference. And you'll see that the length of that watermark is the same as the length of the entire talk. One striking thing to notice is that we can define variables like slides and presentation, which we define over here. So slides is taken out of a clip of this video and we can specify the starting and ending frames that we want that clip to go over. And we do the same with presentation. Presentation shows us a new construct called playlist, which is the simple concatenation of these two clips. And once we're done with this multi-track video, we then again have a fade transition and we end with the splash screen. So that is a really neat, clean and succinct representation of putting together a conference talk video from these raw resources. And now we can start leveraging the full power of the language within which this domain specific video language is embedded, which in this case is Racket. So we could define a new function called conference talk, and it takes as input all these 
raw video and audio resources and then defines in the video DSL how to create a video of it. And once we've defined that function, we can simply import that function and use it just like any other function call in Racket with input parameters that specify our raw video and audio resources. So you see how all the abstraction mechanisms of not just the DSL, but the host language itself can be brought to bear to abstract things, make them simple, factor out all the repetitive parts, and be able to put together even higher level constructs like this conference talk function definition that can capture patterns in your video editing. This is a really great example of Racket's overall philosophy, as I said in the beginning, which is to take a very language-oriented approach to solving problems. Racket provides a lot of abstractions and mechanisms to build these little domain-specific languages. And then you can mix the domain-specific pieces with the more general purpose, full host language in which it is embedded. In terms of implementation, the entire implementation is pretty reasonably sized, only about 2400 lines of code, of which only a tiny fraction, about 90 plus 350, define these domain-specific language primitives, and the remaining, which is the vast majority, are foreign function interfaces to underlying video libraries. Now, this is the part of the paper where the authors start flexing their PL and type system nerd cred, because what would a PL paper be without a dependent type system? But all kidding aside, the language we've built up so far has been totally untyped. And they see an opportunity here for having a dependent type embedded within this language, which can catch errors that have to do with the lengths of these clips. For example, there's a very common class of errors where one section, for example, a transition, may want to use more frames from the previous clip than the length of that clip. And you can eliminate errors like that by creating a dependently typed system which uses the lengths of clips. So that's another example of how embedding this entire video editing domain within a language and then layering a type system on top of that can give you even more power and even more robustness and error checking. So that was a quick look at a paper that proposed a neat, elegant language for video editing embedded within the Racket language system and provided an example of the Racket philosophy of solving problems in a language-oriented manner. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.